Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for a special edition of the show. I've got a person that I've been tweeting with for like years I think now, uh, <laughs> Sam Scrapari down there in Australia with Seraphim Wines. Uh, we've, we've been Twitter buddies for a long time and we've talked about doing this uh, on and off and, and getting together on Skype. Um, we've got I think what a 16 hour time difference between us. It's nine o'clock here in San Antonio and it's one o'clock down there in Australia. Uh, well, you know, Australia's a big country, so, but um, it's down at 1 o'clock where, where you're at. And um, we're, we're about to taste some wines that, we've, uh, that we kind of agreed upon. But Sam, first I want to talk about you, what, what Seraphim Wines is, what you do, and, and, uh, and of course you've got the, the best hat in the world to have on. I mean, I mean you, you're, playing up, you're playing up to a Longhorn over here. <laughs> well, uh, firstly, thanks for having me, Mark. It's... Um... This is, I'm not, not used to this. I've never done this before, so it's an uh, absolute pleasure to be on your show. Um, I guess firstly, Seraphim Wines, it's, it basically originated from my experiences in the U.S. in winemaking. Um, I'd spent a, a couple of years, uh, spent a year, just about a year in California uh, making wine in the Russian River Valley, and then I spent some time in Texas, of all places, in West Texas. I spent um, four, three, three harvests there. And the passion really grew on me to um, to produce um, my own label. So I was able to see how it was done there. Um, obviously, Australia is a pretty big country and very, very prominent wine um, wine growing region. So uh, it, it started off with, as, as a passion and it still is today. Um, what's Seraphim? Seraphim is actually uh, an, an English version of my birth name. Now, being Italian and being very traditional, I was named. There you go. Yeah, exactly. I was named after my grandfather, who is Serafino. Um, so, nice. uh, Serafino, which is, um, it actually means uh, angel right. in Italian. Um, I don't go by Serafino. They nicknamed me Sam pretty much when I was first born. Um, <laughs> but I, <laughs> and it's just for it's easier for people to, to say and you know, they don't have to, you know, tell the story a hundred times. So obviously I go by Sam, but Seraphim is the English version of Serafino. Um, hence, um, I've got the the bottle here. It's I'm not sure if you can see that properly. Oh, it's, nice. It's um, it is it's a, it's a serpent with wings, um, and it falls into the order of the angels in you know in, in biblical type um, uh, scriptures and things like that. So it's a pretty funky label. Uh, it's got a good story behind it and um, hopefully good product in the bottle. So I've really given it a good nudge in the last 12 months. I was kind of mucking around with it for the last few years and then I've, I've basically hit my straps with selling and producing and things like that. So um, that's uh, that's where that's at. So very small quantities, boutique quality, um, reasonable prices. I don't go over the top of the prices, but it's a start anyway. Right. Well, I saw one of the saw one of the videos you did. Uh, I think you actually were tasting that one. Uh, <laughs> I think you were tasting that one uh, a couple months ago. And uh, I mean, the, fifteen dollars Australia, I assume, right? Well, basically, it's only one to one, so the same as the, as the US. Okay. I, think, I think it might be yeah. So it's it's very that's very reasonable. reasonable. I mean, that's it, it's great. Um, do you have any distribution in the US? Not yet. No. <laughs> um, sorry, go ahead. No, it's not yet. No, no distribution yet over here. It's purely marked with my production size being uh, the size it is. I haven't got enough to go around, basically. Um, right. I'm, I, I'm servicing my local uh, market here in town, which um, our town's a small town of 40,000 people compared to, I suppose, the US. So I'm just trying to break into there, which I, which I have done. Um, about two hours down the road is Melbourne, which is a population of four and a half million, and I'm just starting to get my starting to get my feet into the door there. So I don't have enough to supply 
the Australian market, let alone the US. <laughs> however, however, I do have some um, very, very close friends. In fact, my mentor lives in California and we've spoken about doing um, an Australian project and taking it over to the US. So I like to think within the next three to five years, perhaps Seraphim will, uh, will trek over the Pacific and um, hit your shores there in the US. Then we'll see distribution, uh, you know, we'll see what happens basically. Okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, because you know, I, I'm I'm sure it'd be great to have it over here. I mean, like you said, you 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 can only service what you have. You know, I mean, exactly. You know, there's there's lots of there's lots of wine wineries out there that they can only service so much. It's not like they can they can do that. You know, like I I experienced that on the beer side with uh, when I moved out of Texas uh, quite a few years ago to move to Ohio. Uh, my favorite beer was not available, which was Shiner Bach. You know, and. If- you can't get it up there, and I could get it like in Michigan. I could get it in Kentucky, which was well, I'm sorry, Tennessee. Well, I could get it there, um, but I could get it like a couple states nearby. But the, nobody just they just didn't have the licensing and they didn't have the production mm-hmm. to distribute there. And so the whole four years I lived there, um, I couldn't get it. And then right about the time I left, they started getting it. And I moved to Chicago, which they didn't have it in Illinois. <laughs> until okay, about two or three years later. Eventually, I was able to get it, but you yeah. know, it was one of those things where, you know, if you have a product that you want you can't get, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of, you know, they're, they're, they're not tiny anymore, but they're, not, they're also not national, but they've, they, they've been adding their production for quite a while. I, I can't remember yeah. how many states they're in now, but yeah, it's, I, I can totally understand that. Oh, look, it's frustrating, but I guess, I guess what comes with small production is being able to manage um, what I've got. Um, the bigger I go, the more money that I've got to put into it. Now, I still work a full-time job, mind you. Yes. Uh, I'm, I work as a, in, in one of the big retail uh, liquor retail stores as a fine wine manager. So that takes up you know, all my time. So what I'm doing with this wine is on, is on the side. Um, but if I was to go bigger, then it's, I've got to go spend more money. And with more money means I've got to employ people. When I'm going to employ people, you know, I've got to have a you know, facility somewhere. And it's it's manageable for one person but the goal is to go bigger but with yeah, bigger comes more money right to spend. yeah <laughs> you know and, and I mean I understand I understand the same thing because you know I'm, I'm a restaurant manager um, I yep. do this you know on, on the side um, so I mean when we get done with this I'll do I'll do another review and then mm. um, I've got actually if this is gonna be fun I've got this I'm not going to like this wine. I know I won't. But I have this wine here. It's called Cul-de-Sac Winery. There's a the local grocery chain here, HEB. Uh, yep. This is their like Trader Joe's ver- you know, version of, of whatever wine. And I had their Cabernet Sauvignon a couple months ago. I bought three wines. I got their Cab. It was not good. And I just don't think this is going to be good. But then uh, <laughs> I'll review this, uh, the Sonoma Coutrera Sonoma Coast. <laughs> I know that winery very well. <laughs> so I'll be reviewing that. Um, yep. And that's technically not my premium wine because I bought it for eighteen fifty, but I'm going to make it my premium wine, and this is my value wine. <laughs> but um, you know, when I do so, I'll, I'll when I do those two, then I'll probably must spend most of the day tomorrow uh, getting at least our our video ready to go, so on Monday I can upload it, um, yep. and then I'll. Maybe tomorrow or sometime next week, I'll work on that one. And somebody asked me, how long does it take me to do these things? And I said, well, I mean, I got the set, which you're seeing the green screen, but everyone else is going to see the, the, probably the barrel room, um, yeah. which is, from, uh, which is in, from France, actually. It's uh, the uh, Petit Pouc, which is a winery in the Entre du Mer. They were, yeah. depending, on, depending on the records, they were founded in 1337. So I had a visit there. Cool. Um, and, and if I had known that this, this place existed... When I was up there, I would have stopped by because I was staying up near there. Um, and then I found another winery called uh, Le Marzel, which my other nickname is Mars. Yep. I wish I'd known that one. But anyway, um, so once I do all that, I mean, the video production itself, all the post production, takes pretty much an entire day for the computer to finally number crunch all of it. So, yep. I mean, someone was like, really? It's like, yeah, it takes, it takes a while to set all this up. I've got all these lights and all that. And, then it takes time to, to break it down. So this is not just a. It used to be I could just I would just put the video camera on on a tripod and just go, and Bang it out. and Way yeah, and just be like, okay, <laughs> we got it. And then now I've gotten all I don't know, sophisticated, 
I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, it looks great. Well, I, I try. I, I try to make it look as good and, and sound as good. I mean, I've got my. I've got. This is actually the first time I've used this setup with the audio. I couldn't figure out yep. for months why I couldn't get the. I couldn't plug in the microphone to the back of the iMac and hey, make it sound good. And the, yep. last week I was just online looking for stuff, and somewhere along the line they said that the, the all the Macs have the input is just like an iPhone. It's a three ring instead of a two uh. ring. So and that, and then and they were like, that's why you have to use the little USB input. So I'm like that, and so that's what I do. I have this little i this thing called from Griffin called iMic. I've had it for years, mm. and I bought it because of that. And I completely forgot, and I was impressed. I t- tested it, and it, it sounded great. So fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So trust me, I understand you, you're working, you know, fifty maybe sixty hours a week, yep. and then you're. You're probably putting a lot more. You're putting a lot more effort into into the winemaking probably uh, than, than I'm doing with this because like next week I'm basically taking off because I'm doing yep. two two shows today and then next week I don't have to worry about too much of my days off. Yep. Um, so I'll, I'll do that. But you know, I I understand. There's you're, there's not much left for free time. <laughs> it's, it's not. No, it's not. That's why I've taken three weeks vacation from work. So uh, hence why I was able to organize this with you. Otherwise, I couldn't do it. It's just yeah. impossible. Oh yeah, exactly. And and being the industry that I'm in, um, I, I think we've talked about this before. Like I was like, look, you know, I'm up at three in the morning my time, you know. So if we were gonna set something up, I, I mean, I, I you know I would make sure it was like three in the morning my time. If it was gonna be an after work thing, just in case I had to stay late for some unknown reason on a Wednesday. But you know, it, it's I'm used to being awake, you know, and, and at odd hours. So yes. doing doing this with somebody halfway across the world. It's no big deal. Yeah, <laughs> I'm awake. <struggled. laughs> but um, so let's let's talk about the wines um, that we're going to do here. Uh, I don't know which order you want to do them in. I thought maybe we do the 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 Bordeaux last, and we do well, the, with new the Bordeaux. World first. I'll just cut you off there. Sorry, Mark. I don't have Chateau Beaumont. Okay, I have Chateau. Wait. Hang on. What is it? A Chateau Le Bourdieu. The, the Beaumont, I couldn't get. I couldn't okay. get here locally. I could, but it was in the city, and I just by the time I got it, I wouldn't have been able to okay. get it in time. So, look, I've got a similar one. It's a cheapy one. It's Cabernet. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It'll do the same thing. <laughs> when I called, okay, so when I called the, the local, the, the closest wine shop to me, um, I called and I said, hey, I, I, this is what I'm doing. I said who I was. This is what I'm doing. And it was kind of funny because I didn't get like any response. I go, that's cool. And I was like, I guess they don't know who I am. But, um, <laughs> or they do and they just don't, they don't care. Because I go in there every once in a while, buy a wine, and I've handed out my little cards. So I said, yeah, I'm looking for Chateau Beaumont and uh, make sure you have it. And the lady goes, how do you spell that? And I went, well, it's like the, it's like the, the, the town in Texas. If you if you if you live in Texas, you've heard of Beaumont, right? And she goes, "Well, I'm from California." I went, yeah. "Okay." I said, "Granted, I get it. You've, it's you know, it's a small town. For those of you who don't know where it is, it's a small town about 90 miles east of Houston. Been there plenty of times because in my previous life, I had to go over there for magazine stuff. But um, and it's I mean, there's nothing special about the town other than it's a lot of you know oil and gas industry going there. But yeah. it was just funny that I had to spell it for her. Yes, <laughs> it was like oh, oh, well. it's, it's a little town in in Texas. No, I don't know. I don't, I'm not from here, California. But uh, all right, so we we were doing uh, we're going to do some pinfolds and do Columbia Crest, right? So we got the Canuga Hill, all right, and yep. I've got the 2009. And what do you have? You have the 2010. I got the 10. Okay, um, the the, the, the 09 has gone. It's finished. So wow. the, the next yeah. pressing was the 10. And I just I didn't tell him vintage. So just get me a bottle of this, a bottle of this. And uh, so I walked. I went to the store, and it was there for me. So nice. So so we, we're kind of doing a little vertical, effectively. Absolutely. And then uh, we've got the Columbia Crest. Uh, I've got the yeah exactly. Cabernet Sauv. You got two thousand eight, and I've got two thousand nine. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> that's cool. I mean, that's that's fine. I mean, we're probably gonna get a pretty much the same thing out of it. You know, maybe I'll yeah. get one, more one thing than the other. But so um, what was uh. Besides the fact that these are pretty easily available in both countries, um, what was the thought process in, in kind of picking these? Because I know these were your suggestions, and I was like, this sound, it sounded great to me. Well, I just wanted to keep it 
simple and educational for our for our viewers. Cabernet, um, the king of the jungle, red in the world, can be made in a million different ways. So what I wanted to see was Penfolds Coon, uh, sorry, Penfolds Coonunga Hill made in the South Australian style, which is dry, full body. It's got a, they've got a lot, lot of acidity. They've got a lot of new world sort of characters versus Columbia Crest from Washington State, where there might be a few people that don't realize that they make some pretty good Cabernets in, out of Washington State. And I just wanted to, sh and also the, cap uh, the, the Bordeaux, Old World, um, Terroir, how completely different it can be over there in, in Europe. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, I just want to show, showcase, along with yourself, three different styles of the same wine, basically. Yeah. Yeah, because I know when we were doing our, our Twitter conversation, I was like, I would think it'd be really cool to do an American and an Australian wine, so we can yep. we can compare those differences, and that we're 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 making those connections with our countries, and and then yeah, an old world, which you know, I kind of felt that probably a, a Bordeaux would be the most easily available type of, at least even if we can't get the same chateau, we're gonna get a similar style out of it. Yep. Um, and it'd be probably the most widely available type of thing. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is great that we're gonna do this. I, I've been look, so cool. looking forward to this. <laughs> I'm excited, I'm, so I'm, I'm, here. I'm really excited. I can't even say it, I'm just so excited. You get the, the label that isn't so banged up, that, that side. <laughs> See, I got a brand and everything, you know? I don't, I don't know, we got the shirt. I, I decided to go branding today instead of just my usual like polo shirt. <laughs> oh, hey, whatever. You, you whatever got yours. Suits, you got, yours, you got your. Uh, well, I don't have a thirteen thirty seven wine polo shirt. I I just you know regular. But you've got you've got your yeah awesome. Polo. I've got the the sign behind me. <laughs> yep. Hey, it's all about marketing. <laughs> That's right. I mean, come on, man. All right, so let's let's get into this. Uh, let's do the pen folds first. Let's do the pen folds. Okay. All right, so I've got the 2009. Now I bought it for 8.83 at uh, the, the, the local merchant Specs uh, Specs Liquor. They're out of Houston, which was that's why it was kind of funny. Why I was like, you're right next to Houston. You don't know how to spell Beaumont, but um, they're 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 out of Houston. I remember they they're they're all they're huge over there, and they've got two stores here in San Antonio. Just opened up a, a second one on the west side of town. I live kind of on the east side, so. When they opened up, I was ecstatic because I didn't really want to be going to my local HEB every time to buy wine. Nope. So no, I've, I've actually I'm friends with um, the Specs Wines on uh, on Facebook, and I'm amazed by their range. They're mo they're a monster store. Like, oh yeah, it's oh, huge. Yeah, yeah and, and yeah. I mean they've they've got they've got yeah, a nice got nice. nice selection of wine, and then you've got and then they got all the liquors, uh, and then they've got their 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 specialty foods. Um, now I do think they have cigar. They have a, they have a humidor. They got a walk-in humidor. Um, I've I've seen it. I've never gone in there, but I, I know they have that. Uh, Gabriel's has their same thing, uh, kind of north, north, not quite west, but north side of town. Uh, they're they're another. They're the big San Antonio chain. They've got Gabriel's, and they also own the liquor stores, Don's and Ben's. But uh, yep. they have their superstore. And um, the similar idea, they've got a big selection of wine, liquor, um, humidor, beer, food. Not, they've, they've got the food, but I don't think they have as big of a selection of food as Specs. Um, both are great stores, they're just Specs is closer to me. So I, yep. I tend to go there a little more than Gabriel's. All right, so uh, let's dive into so, this. Canunga Hill, um, Penfolds, synonymous with wine uh, making around the world. They're branding, they're actually owned by Treasury Wine Estates, mm -hmm. which um, was uh, bought out. Anyway, I, I, I can't explain the amount of times they've been sold off, but they're right. owned by Treasury, which is, I think it's the second largest wine group in the world outside of Constellation. Um, pretty much the branding is Probably Australia's best known outside of Australia, especially in the Asia region. Uh, Penfolds is just number one. Um, Kununga Hill is basically the second entry level wine that they make. Um, we sell it here for about ten to twelve dollars a bottle Australian. Mm -hmm. um, the wine is a blend of different um, Cabernet from different uh, regions within South Australia. So there is. Coonawarra region, which is down in the south of South Australia. There's the McLaren Vale region, which is right on the ocean. 
there's Barossa, which is inland, which tends to be more more of a warmer climate. Um, so this is basically a blend of, of, of all those regions put together into a basically a very simple, easy easy drinking style of, of Cabernet. Um, and there's not one region that sticks out more than the other. That's why they've blended, blended the, the Cabernets together from these regions. The, the wine itself, it's got this beautiful brooding blackberries and, and, um, and, and dark berry fruits. Beautiful spice. Um, it's, it's got quite. It's got quite a complex nose. Now, I was very, very fortunate enough to bump into the chief winemaker of Penfolds, who actually come into the store that I work work at uh, back uh, early early this year. Now, he's the chief winemaker. He's the the, the head honja who makes Penfolds Grange. Have you heard of Penfolds Grange? Oh yes, <laughs> a little out of my price range, <laughs> well, but you know, <laughs> it is absolutely. He, he assured me that Penfolds Canunga Hill has as not as long, probably not a longer, longer longevity as the, the Grange, but this stuff you can put it away for ten to fifteen years, and it'll be as good as it'll it'll age. Right. Uh, it'll have all the hallmarks of a, of a really really well well made wine. Age it'll age for forever, just about. Nice. Uh- we're gonna. I'm not gonna stop anything. My light went out. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. So now that means I gotta unplug my microphone. So you're not gonna get much audio from me. For a while. That's all right. I'll just sit here and drink. Ah, there we go. The joys of the rechargeable batteries and having multiple multiple ones. The the, the lights I use, I got the, the third light. I don't I don't have it hooked up because that's my camera light. But this little light here, this little LED light, the batteries you can put like I think it's eight AA batteries, or you yeah. can buy one of those rechargeable camera batteries. Makes rechanging them a lot easier. Um, you know, I, I get I get those dark fruits here um, and the spices. But what's really weird is, and I've never had this happen before, but I almost say I like this. On mine, I got like a mustard out of it, like a, like a brown mustard, and I've never had that in a wine. And I don't know if it was just some weird thing, but now what I don't get it. You know, but... I, I know where you're coming from. Is, is it more of a savory character? Is it something yes. more on the... Okay. There's, there's two trains of thought with Cabernet. Um, see, with mine, I'm getting... I get a mint and a vegetal yes. type thing going. Right, on. I think that's where I got that mm-hmm. mustard, like a rub, like a like a like a mustard rub type of thing, and I'm getting that spices and and you know it was, you know it was nice. And I've I've had this label in the past. Um, I don't know if I've had the they, they make more than Cabernet Sauvignon. They have the Shiraz and and all the others, right? Or is it just the Cab? They do a Shiraz. They do a Cab Shiraz. I think they might do a Merlot. You know? Yeah, I think I think, I think I've had the Shiraz. Spectrum. I think I've had the Shiraz actually on the show, which I I'd meant to uh, look it up before we started, but because um, I know I've had it. But if I've had it in the past, one of my one of the chains I worked for sold this, and uh, yeah, we we had fun with the name because it's just a funny name to at least to Americans it is, you know. So um, okay, be here. <laughs> yeah, Let me make sure I spell it right here. So I can go to my website and I'll find the uh, let's see pity. I found, yeah, here we go. I found my thrill on Canunga Hill. It was my 32nd mm. episode, by the way. So this is this is old. Mm. We're talking 2009, July 2009. I did the 2007 Shiraz Cabernet. Yep. So um, that was that. Oh, and not only did, did I do that, but I brought the bottle to a pity party a few days later. There, uh, we had this thing at. Um, there's a company called Sales by Five here in San Antonio. They do like sales consulting. They basically yep. tell you how to be more efficient in marketing, and at least that's how I th- what they think they do. But they'd have these parties on Friday, especially when the ec- the economy was taking a you know a dive. Um, and the Friday's called the pity party. And I actually didn't have I was out of work at the time, um, and uh, that's a story we won't get into. But need to say I, I was out of work, and uh, every Friday they had these parties, and eventually I started bringing. 
Uh, I'd bring wine occasionally, and I, we'd record a, an episode of me tasting yep. wine and bringing other people in. And I think that was one of the ones I had some of the people around, and I was like, taste these wines. What what do you get out of it? Not not me sitting there regurgitating what I had just said a couple episodes yep. on three different wines. So, um, but uh, you know, I've I've had this brand before, and I know it's quality. But yeah, I get that like meaty. And you get like like that rub, so you get the I guess all those spices. And I guess that one that for that brief moment, there was that mustard, that dry mustard. And now it's more. I, I totally totally agree, and that's and that's the style that, that they make it, and that's what I'm saying. How they blend different regions together to give uh, subtle subtle differences, um, and I and I think that'll be that particular character will be from fruit from Kunawara, which is down in the south. Okay. Which is, there's no relation in the name, Kanunga Hill, Kunawara. Right. But um, Kunawara region, they grow it on this really, really rich, oh, it's called the Terra Rossa soil. So it's, 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 the soil's like the color of my cap. And so you get, you get a lot of um, green vegetal type things with a bit of savory note. And there'll be oak in there that'll give it that savory note. I'd certainly get the meatiness of the 2010. Um, and obviously, with the benefit of you having an, a, an aged wine, like a year younger, uh, sorry, a year older than mine, you're going to get that more of the, um, the I guess, the the aging and the fruit aging. And then you also get the oak, and then it'll just meld together into this just this very very good drinking wine for sub ten bucks. Yeah, and you know now I'm getting more of the vegetal out of it. I'm getting more of those peppers, uh, you know, the green the green peppers. Um, yep. So I mean it's and this is one of the, I talk about this whenever this happens not every wine I do this happens but when it starts developing in the glass we haven't even drank it yet or well, I haven't <laughs> had any and I'm starting already in, in the the bouquet is already just changing that's that's one of the beautiful things about wine some wines I, it never happens I you know like I said this wine probably won't do it <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably give it a... I don't want to be prejudicial about this wine. I just know I've had the label with the other wine, and we'll see how it is. Then again, I, I happen to like Two Buck Chuck, kind of, or I did, back when I was... when that was all I could afford, so maybe that's why I liked it. But, you know, this... Back to this wine. Um, you know, this is this is a, this is a one of those wines where the nose, I could, I could just kind of smell it for a while. And I, I was out with some people the other day, and... I was, I'm sitting there, you know, drinking my wine, and I smell it, drink it, and every single time. And she was like, do you do that? And I'm like, yeah, Wrong. every time I'm going to take a sip, I smell it. I'm not trying to look pretentious or snobby. It's just that I'm looking for the development, or I just like this. I just like the smell of it, you know? There's, there's, there's wines out there that just have great bouquets. Actually, now that you mention that, I've been doing that. I've been smelling it, put it down, smelling it, put it down, and people are going to think, hey, "What the hell is this guy, man? Who's he think he is?" But I'm the same. It's a, it's a force of habit. It's something you you do that you don't know you're doing, right? And it gets the attention of people around you. Like, what's wrong with him? <laughs> doing my job. Yeah, right. But there's also um, I get a little bit of chocolate thing going on in in this wine. Um, oh god, I could, you're right. I can smell this all day. Yeah, and and you and know. There's a there's that power of suggestion. You mentioned chocolate, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, maybe. And it's not prominent. You know, maybe maybe with yours is a little bit more more out there, whereas mine is more subtle. But yep. um, I was talking with my parents about that today. Is you know, we we people who don't who don't do wine a lot, they just go. It smells like wine. Tastes like wine. And when you guide them through the tasting, you know, I did this. Yep. At, I did this at my party a couple weeks ago. I had a guy who's somewhat new to wine and we're at the, we're at this wine bar and and I'm, I'm i'm like we're drinking this wine and i'm like do you get this out of it because at first what do you what do you get because i don't know i'm not good with wine okay do you get this and i didn't like get like a specific fruit i just said you get dark kind of fruits and he was like yeah and i don't know if he was trying to appease me or not but i know that when i'm at tastings and people start naming these things and and i start smelling i'm like yeah i get that you know and sometimes yeah. they go they're full of crap i'm not getting that but you know the power of suggestion helps open up those little things that you kind of go i know i get something but what is it and that's and that's exactly right and that's why i learned i learned from listening to other people you know people making suggestions this is what you're smelling yeah, yeah it does and the more wine that i tried the more i was getting and now i'm, I'm at the point where um Going on on leave from work, I've had to train up someone to take over my job because it's probably the most critical part of the business. 
And so we're going through wine tasting with, with this, this girl and she's t- saying to me, Sam, I don't like wine, I don't like wine. Well, give it a chance. And it's <laughs> sometimes it's, it's an uphill battle, but if you just, you, you, I think I find that I'll give them a bit of confidence by just, okay, well, what do you taste? What do you smell? Oh, it's a bit, they'll say it, berries. I get berries, perfect. Right. Is it red berries or dark berries? Oh, it's it's like red berries. Like, it's like cherries or it's like raspberry. Perfect. And then the and then it happens. And the more training you do with your like I find that I do with my staff, that the more confident they get. You know, they get the thing with the tannin, like that their mouth gets grippy with the tongue on the on the roof right. of their mouth, and they, they go on. It's, it's it's grippy. It's perfect. You're getting the the tannin, the structure of the tannin. Anyway, but it's 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 a confidence thing, and, and a lot of people are intimidated by wine. Um, think because they think oh, I don't know the the ins and outs, but it's it's a personal choice. You yeah. like what you like. Exactly. You know. I mean, you know, like I'm keep I keep going back to that wine. I'm not gonna like, but you know what? <laughs> but you know what? People love that wine. I've had pe- I had people on Twitter going, oh, "We want you so bad to review this wine." I'm like, okay, yeah. you know. And I, I reviewed one bottle, and it was a Merlot. And you know what? I didn't like it. That doesn't mean that it's a bad wine. Maybe it just I don't know. Maybe this wine is going to be beautiful. Maybe I'll be like, "Wow, it's awesome," you know, and and that's that's one of the things that that um, you know, I guess as as wine people, especially if we're doing any type of reviews, it's it's very. You have to remember that. One, I, I when I try to review wines, I try to remember that this is someone's livelihood. So I don't want to sit there and and bash it as this is crap and it's swill and you should never buy it. But, you know, at the same time, you know, some people, you know, it may be, it's a personal thing. You know, some people love certain styles of wine, yeah. you know, like in the Texas, you know, they, they love sweet red wine. <laughs> I don't like it. And I've had some, I've had them and I've reviewed them. And, and now I'm at the point where unless someone's like saying, please review it, which no one really has, yeah. I'm probably not going to buy a sweet Texas red wine because I'm not going to like it probably. I'm, I don't want to yeah. give it a bad review. You know, so I, I know that this might be something I'm not going to to review. But, Unless someone asks you to do it. Right. And and even then, I'm going to be like, look, you know what? If I don't like it, I'm going to flat out say it. I'm not going to like bury, I'm not going to not put it out. If I'm if I'm put the effort in to record a video, yeah. it's going to go up on the website. Of course you it know? is. <laughs> but, of course um, it is. But yeah, but, I mean. Um, and that's exactly right. I mean, um I guess I've, I guess when I was doing my reviews, and I still do a few with uh, Wine Passion TV, I'm just impartial. Um, I just say, yeah, it's it's a good wine, something I don't have, I don't wouldn't buy again. But you're right, it's someone's livelihood, someone making money out of it, and um, there's always a wine for someone out there. That's what I like to think. There is, there there totally is, because you know you've got the people that maybe you know like, maybe they like you know this wine. But they're not mm-hmm. going to like the Columbia Crest, or or they love cabs, but they hate Merlots, or they they hate Pinots, <laughs> or whatever. Or, you know, they're white wine drinkers. They don't they don't like reds. So I mean, it's yeah. it's a uh, you know, it's definitely something where there is that personal connection to wines. And I say it all the time. You know, drink what you know. I I borrow a phrase I got from a podcaster, not not Gary, this audio podcaster out of in Indianapolis. He was actually the first guy I used to listen to. He needed to do reviews necessarily he just more like education but his thing was drink what you like um cool. the rest is i forgot what he said drink what you like the rest is something i forgot what it was yeah. but the point was the best wine the best wine in the world is the wine the wine that you like absolutely not based on price not based on region not based on it's what you, you like what you like mm-hmm all right now that i've tasted it it's really fruity. I mean, it's, it. This is to me one of those wines where where the nose, while there's a fruit on the nose, it was more earthy, more you know meaty. And then yep. when you taste it, it kind of does a little 180 on you. Yep. Um, and you really get those. You really get. I get maybe not maybe the darker fruits. I get more of the just the, the brighter red fruits out of it. Yep. Um, but uh, welcome to Australian wine, my friend. Yeah, and that's. That's our conditions, because we're such, because we we grow in such sort of a warm climate. Um, our, our wines tend to be on the palate fruit driven, and and that's uh, unfortunately 
there's a negative to that because sometimes there's too much fruit and so people mistake it for being too sweet or it's too big or too goopy or but that's this style that we do here in Australia, big up front. And, and I agree with you on that. I, I find the same on the on the 2010. It's fruit there. You get the red, I get the dark. Right. Um, but it's, I find there's a bit of acidity too in the finish. There is. It's, it's got a bit of acidity. For me, the tannins are probably about a medium on a tannin. It's not mm -hmm. really like, it's not killing my mouth, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but you can, you can definitely take, you can definitely feel it. It might even be like a medium minus. Um, you know, maybe because this has settled down just a little bit, just that much more after another year. And this is really more like, what, a year and a half? Well, a year for us, but, or for me, it's really an extra six months, right? In, in a way, right? Spot it's, on the money, man. Yeah, so. Yeah, because our vintage is, um, our vintage is basically a February to, February to April, thereabouts. Um, so it is, it's, it's an 18 month wine. Um, versus, um, well, mine's an 18 month wine, it would be a two and a half year wine, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, but now I also get that meatiness, um, you know, so I've got that fruit, the fruit hit me first, and now I'm getting that little meatiness. Um, yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, for a ten dollar wine, you know, this <laughs> is this is a good quality wine. I mean, if 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 anyone's at, you know trying to figure out well, whether they should buy it or not, yeah, you buy the thing. Um, you know wh whatever the rating you want to give it, it's it's worth buying. It's worth having in your house as a as a as a wine you drink. You know as, as a everyday wine to me. You know it's it's I, I like value wines that are that are good. I mean I I know the Penfolds name is a good brand. So yep. already we're going into I know this is something that should be good quality. But drinking it's confirming that it's it's good. I like it. I like it a whole lot. That's no, I totally, I totally agree. And it's funny, here in Australia, Penfolds, um, people come up to me and say, oh, I don't buy Penfolds because they're overrated. No, no way. These guys pump out the best consistent quality uh, wines year in, year out. I mean, they produce oh, about 1.8 or 2 million cases a year. So that's that's a huge amount of wine. Consistency, it's all, all, all about consistent year in, year out to make a good quality value-driven, you know, quality to price point ratio. So these no, guys just, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there, there, are, there are outfits out there, whether it's wine or any other product that they're mass produced, that the quality really isn't, it's not quality driven, it's, it's just profit driven. But this is this is one of those things that's a, is a good wine. And I can understand, you know, um, I mean, I, I joke with people here, you know, with, with, with beer, like somebody will ask me what your favorite beer is, and I'll, I'll just say Shiner Bach for a domestic. And I said, but for my favorite crap beer, it's Miller Lite. Yep. And then, um, and then you know, for a while, they were like, there's there's the big Foster's craze. And I was like, well, Foster's is a Miller Lite of Australia. <laughs> you know, people, exactly. think, people think, oh, I'm drinking some great beer from Australia. Well, it's Foster's, just like drinking Corona. People in Mexico just kind of go, really? Corona? That's the best you can get? <laughs> it's funny you should say that about Foster's because you can't, well, the store that I work at, I don't think we sell Foster's. It's just a non, it's a non brand, it's a non brand anymore, I suppose. It just doesn't sell. Right. So, yeah, like it <laughs> doesn't exist here in Australia, just about. Yeah, funny. well, and, and Miller, Miller brews it over here anyway. So, I mean, or they, they, they own it or something. They have an interest in it. So, the, me saying that it's a Miller Lite of for Australia, and I was like, then some point in time, Miller bought the rights to brew it or something. I was like, well, there you go. <laughs> well, what that did is it actually bought the company. So, yeah. Mil Saab, SAB Miller, which is obviously Miller, but they bought all uh, the brewery in Australia called, um, or Foster's. Essentially, yeah. it's called Foster's. And Penfolds used to be under Foster's once upon a time. They were owned in the wine division by Foster's. So the wine division was sold off to Treasury and the beer division was bought by Miller. Yeah. So they owned Foster's. <laughs> anyway. Nice. All right. Um